Hello, welcome to the REGARD website, Regulatory Guidance for Academic Research of Drugs and Devices. Today I thought I would talk you through determining whether or not your drug product could be considered exempt. And I wanted to show you how you could use our website to help you make that decision. So this is the homepage for REGARD.org. If you have a drug product that you're considering exemption for, just click on Investigational Drug here or you can also use the menu bar at the top. So here's the Investigational New Drug or Biologic page, and we want to determine if your drug product could be considered exempt from requiring an Investigational New Drug application. So we've created this nice flowchart that came directly from the FDA's guidance document. So first of all, we want to determine is it a clinical investigation? And we have the definition here for uh, what is a clinical investigation. So oftentimes um, drugs are used off-label for clinical practice as standard of care on an individual basis. The FDA considers a clinical investigation when one or more human subjects are involved in a study. So while you may have used a particular product off-label in individual patients, and now you've decided you want to study the effects of this um, off-label use, now it's a clinical investigation. So we want to know, um, does it meet the criteria for being exempt from the FDA regulations for an IND? Even if an investigation is IND exempt, remember, you still have to um, follow the FDA regulations involving human subject protections and conflict of interest and IRB requirements. So we have some yes or no statements here that you can answer regarding your study drug. So is it a clinical investigation? Let's assume yes, that you're looking at more than one patient. If not, if it's not a clinical investigation, then an IND is not required. However, if it is, and the product that you're using is considering a drug, and we have the definition here of what the FDA considers a drug, then we go on down to the next yes or no. So, um, will, will a drug be used in this study? Yes or no? So if your product, uh, whether it's a food, dietary supplement, or off-label drug, meets the definition of a drug, and the answer is yes, and you follow this arrow. If you've determined that it's not a drug, and you're not using a drug or biologic, then an IND is not required. So the next box is, is the study an exempt study of an in vitro diagnostic biologic product? Meaning, you're going to use this product to, to make a diagnosis. So a product is exempt from IND requirements if it meets the following uh, definitions uh, for uh, an, an in vitro diagnostic biologic product. So, if the answer to the above question is yes, that you met the exemption criteria for the in vitro diagnostic biological, then you can consider your study to be exempt from IND requirements. However, if the answer to the question is no, the next thing we want to know is this a product that is lawfully marketed in the United States, meaning is this a drug that's approved for some other indication or is this a drug um, that's never been approved in, in the U.S.? If the answer is no, your drug product has never been approved in the U.S., then an IND is required. Now, if the answer is yes, that you're using a drug off-label, but it's already been FDA approved for another indication, it still may meet the exemption criteria. All five of the exemption criteria must be met before you can consider your product IND exempt. Generally, when I meet with investigators to determine if their drug product meets the exemption criteria, the uh, exemption criteria that we, we most often focus on is the third one. So specifically, 
does the study involve changing route of administration, dosing, the population being treated, or other factors that significantly increase or decrease the acceptability of risk to subjects. So if your drug in question meets all of the five exemption criteria, you can answer yes, you can consider your study IND exempt, and you can go ahead and submit your protocol uh, for IRB approval to begin your study. Be sure to include your justification for exemption when you submit your protocol to your IRB of record. If you were not able to answer yes to all five of the exemption criteria, and you answered no, the next question you might want to consider is the study an in vivo bioavailability or bioequivalence study. If it is, then you need to seek the guidance documents on bioavailability and bioequivalence at the FDA's website. If it's not, meaning you answered no to the exemption criteria, no, you're not doing a bioavailability or bioequivalent study, then an IND is required. So if you find yourself in a situation where an IND is required and you need to proceed to um, an IND application, we can help you with that too. And we have another video to um, explain the IND application. Thanks again.